Hello everyone, welcome to the British Boxing Blog podcast. Delighted to be joined by Cyrus Pattinson. Cyrus, how are you doing, mate? Thanks for joining us. I'm very well. Uh, I'm not too bad at the minute. Like, I came down with a bit of a summer flu, like, but uh, I'm all right. I'm still alive. <laughs> <laughs> Take it over. One and all, Cyrus Pattinson. How good does that sound? How good does that feel? Uh, really, really good. Like, I was honestly by the Sunday, like, the next day, I was just ready to get back in and do it all again. Hey. That's the thing with the pros, like, it's not like that much, is it? When you have another fight the next day, I'm going to wait another eight weeks or something now. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's Marcus. Obviously, we did a podcast with you during the first lockdown, do you know what I mean? And you were, you were, dropping, uh, pretty, you were dropping pretty strong hints to the fact you were going to. You were going to turn over, and then obviously, you know, COVID sort of hit and hit even worse. And, uh, you know, it, it delayed things for you. But, you know, as, as pro debuts go, you know, in your, in your home city in Newcastle, uh, stoppage victory, match room, you know, like, couldn't have gone any uh, better for this. Nah, and the thing that took us back the most was like the support and that that I've had since then. And mm. especially on the night, like, I was so overwhelmed, like, uh, obviously I had been calm and collected all week and then by the time I got in the tunnel and then I started hearing the roar and the noise and that I thought fucking hell there's only meant to be a thousand people here like but I forced this uh, it was a canny got a canny reception like and it really took us back and I'm, then I mean sorry I, after, must, sorry to interrupt, I must admit when you ring walked I couldn't believe the reception like it was a, a goosebumps moment it was like it was incredible I thought wow like it was part of I, that reception it was amazing so did I, like, I didn't expect it at all, like, in the, you know, obviously, during the fight and after, uh, I've said time time again, like, uh, like thank you for everyone for supporting us, like, because it, it, it meant, meant a lot, like, you know, I've tried, it took us about a week to get through all the messages, like, but I'm not complaining, I've, uh, I wanted to go through one by one and, and thank everyone, like, for, for uh, supporting us and messaging us, like, it was, uh, that meant, meant, like a world it was like it must have been like it must have been an amazing week like it, it like just you know not amazing but like definitely tricky as well like being in the bubble the matching bubble like the spotlight you know doing more interviews probably than you've ever done and like yeah but, but alongside all the COVID stuff that goes with it then like pressure sort of building as the week gets closer to fight night and that how did you find the whole like the whole thing to be honest like like you say your mind just starts playing tricks on you now and again. Like everyone, everyone gets it. They probably lie for say that they don't. You, you're thinking, oh, have I cut made the way too easily, or am I cutting it too fine, or I'm only doing three shadows a night? Do I not need to do more? And it's just a constant battle with yourself. And, and at the end of the day, I just kept reminding myself that the hard work had been done. I was, I was fit as I, as I've ever been. My yeah. weight was on. I had all the spawn, all my spawn went perfect. Uh, and I was just kept, kept reminding myself that, and, and that just kind of kept us calm and stuff. And obviously, as the days are getting close, and by the press conference, you're st starting to become a bit more realistic then, and then you get the way in. Uh, and then fight night, it's just we're trying to be occupied, stay occupied. Obviously, sitting in the bubble is quite difficult. Yeah, I would have. I'd rather be out and along the quayside and get a coffee and that and get some fresh air. So, unfortunately, yeah. we, we only had the car park to walk around. But uh, it was all right, didn't days near home. Like, so. Hopefully, that's the end of the bubbles, mate. You know, fingers crossed that things are Hopefully. starting to come out of normal. Um, you know, we had we had Callum French on here a few weeks back, he, former sort of GB and Burnley teammate. Um, and he was saying that, uh, like, and you probably attest to this yourself, that, like, when you you know, you're fighting away for GB and you, you're, you're away from the spotlight in these sort of Kazakhstan sports halls and putting the hot, you know what I mean? And suddenly uh, yeah. you're bang centre stage, you're, you're on Sky, you know what I mean? You've got everything, yeah. uh, everything that comes with, with match room yeah. and stuff. How did you find, like, the glare, the spotlight, like, that week? To be, without being arrogant or big-headed, like, I really I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Because no, you do all the hard work or and you win the fights and you win the tournaments and stuff and you don't really get a lot of kind of not praise but it's like you, there's not a, no, a lot of notice you know yeah. do, like not so much of a big deal like a bit under so, the radar type of thing it is I made I so it was it was nice to 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 speak with different people and have the interviews and get some good photos and stuff and 
I really enjoyed it. I really, and like, it's hard because, you know, when like your nerves and that start kicking in, you start thinking, oh, you just want to get ready to fight. But you've got to, I've learned through time now, like I've really tried to slow myself down and just try and enjoy yeah. it a bit. Because sooner or later, it's, it's over. I'm a week later, and then you're thinking, oh, I wish I was back in it. So like you've just got to try. Yeah, try to Sort of thing in the morning, yeah. take it all in, like, and absorb it because obviously, I need one pro debut, like, and uh, it's gone before you know, isn't it? But as you, as you mentioned there, like, you would get one, you would get one pro debut, but performance wise, so si, you couldn't have uh, couldn't have asked for much better, could you? No, nah, I really enjoyed it, like, and um, uh, obviously, the first round was a like, slightly cagey, and he's quite unorthodox, he was game, yeah, uh, but the unorthodoxness where. We were stepping through with his shots and changing his stance and stuff. Took a little bit to, to settle into, but I think added to that was obviously how I felt in the in the tunnel coming out. So when you honestly when your hair's on the back of your neck are standing up when you hear and everyone's shouting for you and that you're thinking I didn't expect this at all. And then added with uh, a dangerous Bulgarian coming forward swinging at you. But once I settled into it, like oh. Just started really enjoying it. I think uh, I think there was one point in the I think I hurt him at the end of the first round, uh, and I remember I, I was eager to get back out in the second. And Graham, I remember pushing his back in, pushing his back down on my stool and slapping us <laughs> just to as he does. He was all like and and obviously just got the got the job done not long after. You you asked for the you asked for the winning winning record opponent, didn't you? And you asked. For- <laughs> You asked for the six rounds as well, didn't you? You fancy, you know, yeah. maybe he's trying to get Sorry. with him and, you know, what you sort of used to. And you didn't want any pushovers, basically, did you? But... No, I, I wanted to uh, still to test myself. Uh, and I knew that was going to bring up the best of me. Uh, I know that a lot of fighters tend to opt to fight the, the opponents with a, with a losing record or the ones that are a bit more durable and stuff and that can fiddle the way through. But, I think sometimes it makes you look worse, and uh, it's hard to get your shots off, and it, it's just not. I don't. For me personally, I I prefer to to have someone coming. It was going to be openings, mm-hmm. and uh, just makes it more of a win, doesn't it? Is that because of the environment you're from, Cyrus? Like you know, Burley, GB, that you've always tested yourself and you've always been pushed, and it's like, well, why? Why stop now? Type of thing. Do you know what I mean? Why it just comes natural to you to want to be like competitive and you know in with people that are going to push you back a bit. Yeah, yeah. I, f- I feel like that's just me as a person, anyways. Yeah. In yeah. So like even when even when we've been away on training camps and stuff in Kazakhstan and stuff, and I've seen the likes of Shabirganov, the tall n- world world number one softball that stops people for fun and that. I've always wanted. I've like. You, I don't know why, but somewhere inside of us, like, I want to do some rounds. I want to, I want to be in. I want to yeah. do some sport. And it's certain types of things that you're just always testing yourself. Just, I want to see how hard he actually does hit, and where you push yourself, and you get into them sorts of situations. So, but I've definitely with my team as well, like with Charlie Sims and Graham Wellerford, we had a selection of opponents that were put out forward from my room, and that he was the 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 best one. So that's the one that we picked, and Eddie mentioned at match room that I only need you only wanted us to do a four on to start, but we opted for the six. Uh, I just think the start is you mean to go on, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. It was good to see. It was good to see Graham in your corner. I was wondering who was who was going to do it. I didn't know if it was going to be Graham or if it was going to be like you know like another trainer. I didn't you know I didn't know, but it was you know Graham. I guess doesn't always do the four corners, does he? But it was good to. Good to see you've stuck with Graham and he's, you know, still the main man, you know. No, definitely. It's someone that I, I trust and it's someone that I believe that's took us all the way from grassroots and I say it time and time again, he took us from, like, the grassroots all the way through uh, the, to, to the pinnacle where I was at. So I don't think there was a better man to give the opportunity to and to work with that I wanted to. Uh, and, that, and that's what we've done, like, and, and we're going to continue. Oh, man. Where, like, you, you mentioned there about grassroots and from the start, like, going right back to the start, Cyrus, where did, where did boxing, like, 
start for you? What was your what was your introduction to it? How did you get into it? Introduction, uh, I was boxing at a club in uh, Haggiston, uh, Hadston, Hadston, sorry, so it's not far from Ashton. Yeah. Uh, it was actually uh, Hilton Castle North. It was closed, it was called, because it was, it was a Hilton Castle in Sunderland. Yeah, yeah. And it's a club in, up north, and that's where I started. Uh, I had three fights and I had one three. And then I started training with my uncle, Kyrie Pattinson, who now has uh, the Anik Boxing Club. Right, okay. Uh, so I trained with him for a lot of years. Uh, I moved. Then he started bringing me down to Newcastle, where I was training at Rye Hill with Manny Burgo and Paul King. Yep. So I, I think I was about 25 fights in, uh, roughly, when I was with them. What age, then that, talk, what age are you talking there? Uh, I must have been about eight, eighteen, yeah, eighteenish. Uh, I had about twenty-five fights, one twenty, twenty-two. I think it was about twenty-one. Uh, then that's when I had left. I left to go to to go to Burnley. I was kind of I was doing. I think it was the Ace Boxing Scholarship at the time. Yeah, and we were training in Burnley, and that just seemed. Better for me just to, to stay on there an extra hour or two with the training. And I'd met Graham a few times at uh, certain boxing clubs, uh, shows and stuff. And I just felt like that was the next step. Like sometimes you, you feel like you kind of you go flat a little bit. Like, and I, I felt like I was going to be the smallest fish in the biggest pond there. I barely everyone had everyone won more national titles than I had even fights. So I thought. It took a lot to get used to at the start with, like, yeah. yeah, even every session were headaches and bust noses, like, <laughs> but obviously you, it's, you either quit or you, you adapt and you, you get better. Uh, so that's what's happened. It is fascinating, that, that, that insight into Berkeley, and uh, I ask everyone that comes on here, like, you know, as yeah. we had Frenchy on, we had Mark Dickinson on, it's like, what what is it that makes that club so special? Like, you know, you listen. Yeah. You list the talents that have came through there, like just recent years alone, like yourself, like Mark, like the McCormack. Do you know what I mean? Uh, like Tony Hutchins was there. Kind of, it's just the, the list goes on. Do you know what I mean? Hannah oh. Robinson, et cetera. Like, how, how, like, what is it about Berkeley that just produces talent after talent, that conveyor belt of talent? Yeah, I, th- I think it's just the quality that was, yeah, that I don't know where it's kind of stemmed from, uh, but there must have been quality there at the start. And I think. Success breeds success, like you say. Uh, obviously, if there's three good kids or two good kids there already, then the people that are spawning with them or working with them, they're going to get better. Yeah. And then more people come through, then it's just, and that's just how it works, I think. We say, we say we're like the England squads and stuff like that, I think. So, obviously, you know, one by one, you you all be getting this sort of drift feed into the pro ranks now. Do you know what I mean? It was... Uh... You know, as you said, as we said, you know, you sort of dropped some strong hints that, you know, last year you were thinking about it and stuff. And I guess, you know, things got delayed, you know what I mean? So you're, you know, it's a year later now, but here you are, do you know what I mean? And the other lads are going to be, you know, Mark's going over, like Tommy Hodgson, French. Yeah. Probably got a decision to make, do you know what I mean? And it's just like that, it's going to be such an exciting journey, like for, for Northeast Boxing, who's, you know, apart from, say, like Lewis and Tommy Ward, have, and Savannah as well have been maybe he's a bit starved of like top class boxing for quite a while up here and that journey following all you guys turn over is going to be uh, pretty special isn't it definitely I think it's exciting times for North East boxing as a whole like uh, you see a lot of other areas have had it over the years like where they've filled shows out with and the other could fill two or three shows out with talent from like Liverpool Manchester London yeah, yeah. but we've we struggled to fill one show like we have, but obviously now it's there's more of us that are coming through. We're, we're starting to we can block out the show and and max it out. Like so, I think there's good good, good times that are coming. And we mentioned that atmosphere of the Eagles. Of, I call it the Eagles Arena. Like a thousand in there, I think. And it was it was just it was red hot, wasn't it? And you, that must make you think. God, imagine imagine twelve thousand in the in the big arena. Do you know what I mean? That must be that must be a, a, a prospect. I, 
definitely Eddie was saying as well, like he says, if this is what a thousand people are like, I was thinking that they couldn't even think about what a full metro radio arena was like coming out of. So probably better I started with a thousand like and try and settle myself into it there. Uh, it was it was just nice to be back, you know. Like it had been over a year since I've been at any boxing, you know, and like just to obviously the main event didn't go the way people wanted, but just to be there and see like yourself and April and Lozzy and you know, like get them northeast names sort of back out again. It was yeah. great to be back in it. It makes like as a fan, you know, it makes me want to go more. But as a fighter, it must you must be like thinking, like, come on, what next? Where's my second fight? Uh, you know what I mean? Like I was ready to go again, like and I don't even think it was a week, and then I was I was back taking over, and I've been taking over, and my weight's good. I'm ready up further down weight wise than I did for me third for me debut. So it's just taking them little steps, like and uh, obviously Charlie and, and Graham are looking at other opponents for coming into my next fight when it whenever it gets announced. It's just getting the rounds in, like I know that I, as much as I want to have the hundred percent knockouts. Record. Uh, I need the rounds and like yeah. really, especially the press on for the ten round or twelve round of titles. Maybe next year. So it's just looking looking at different opponents with different durability, isn't it? Are you, <clears throat> excuse me. Are you in a rush, Cyrus? Like you know, you're not. I don't mean now. I mean in in, in your career. Like I know you you like you like twenty seven now. I think and like you know, is, is the clock ticking or are you just going to take it nice and easy? I know you mentioned titles there next year. Like, what is the, what's the pace that you would like to be at at this point? I'm just, uh, I'm just take, I'm going to take it one by one fight at a time, like, and, yeah. and if, we, yeah, like, and, and I've had the rounds and, and I'm ready and there's opportunities there, then we'll maybe push on for it, but I'm not really, didn't want to be setting anything out in, in stone or, mm. or like, or next year and the next year whatever just take one fight at a time like I know that I'm going to do a six round on my next fight uh, don't know where it is yet or when it'll be yeah. but um, we'll just take it take it fight by fight and just work on certain things in the gym for this fight coming up that I could have done better for my first fight and as long as there's progression really I think you can't really go wrong you got such a good team behind you as well. Like we mentioned, Matchroom and obviously it'd be Dizone going forward, not Sky, but Charlie Sims. You mentioned Graham, the team of Berkeley. Like you've got the whole package, really. Do you know what I mean? The whole support networks to to turn pro and like make a go of it. You know, you you're guided by the right people, aren't you? No, definitely. And uh, everyone just works together as well. That that I was quite dubious about at the start. Like, I didn't really know how it was all going to fit in right obviously from people from different areas and stuff and but it just went like clockwork on, on my debut which obviously took a lot more stress off me as well uh so yeah i'll be like yeah that, that must as a fighter that must just like you know take the pressure off you take the stress out of your head and just you can concentrate on the fight you know what i mean without thinking god i've got these tickets or this or where's the, you know uh, like different things like that yeah. I don't, yeah, because that's all the little things that, like a lot of people don't realise that it all comes down on you as well. Like mm. about oh, where do I get my rocks from for me fight or who's gonna rock my hands on on when I get the venue or and like oh oh I need to get tickets to them or all these little things or oh, my manager contract hasn't been signed yet and and it needs to be handed in or down at Cardiff before tomorrow and it's all these little things that. Yeah obviously happen all the way through the bubble because my turnaround was so quick as well. Like, I literally left JB, went in for my interview for my licence, got me licence, got me medicals, then I was travelling all over to try and get me licence, get me medicals together, and then just... And then, obviously, when they were getting down to Cardiff, then they were saying that there was, it was missing here, it was missing that. And, like, I'm coming into fight week by now, like, and I'm still trying to usher things along. And when I'm in the bubble... Then they're still asking, requiring for my man manager contract that I need to sign. So there's loads of stuff that was still that hadn't came through yet, or that hadn't had a report for my wrist uh, surgery that, that that was in 2016. They wanted that, so I was like, all these little things like three days before the fight, and that while you're trying to make weight and do interviews, and do you know all these yeah, other little yeah. 
Yeah. Like you, you've got to obviously you still focus on the job, but it's just trying to get through that and be be as calm and keep yourself together as you as you can. That's a fascinating insight, that, and it's it's stuff that I would never think of in a million years. Do you know what I mean? I would just assume that that's what other people would sort, and you know what I mean. And it's 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 mad that you have to go through that, and you, the little things that could, I guess, sort of spiral mentally. Do you know what I mean? At, at some point, and think, you know, anything that takes you away from your boxing is not good, is it? Do you know what I mean? But I'm, I bet you're glad that's all finally like ticked off, signed off. Do you know? But like, yeah. 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 Don't need to do it again. Like I mm-hmm. seen another year, anyways. I was in an interview actually at the time when I was in the bubble uh, with I think it was with Canelo, yeah. and it, it was he mentioned that he's uh, I think it was three days or four days before his fight. I can't remember which fight it was, but he says his brother got kidnapped, and uh, he, he negotiated the whole thing on the phone with them over like the four days before his fight and he says he had hundreds of interviews and he says nobody knew a thing and he says that's that's the champion that's the champion's mindset and I just thought to be honest you know what I mean like you're probably you're negotiating with people that are kidnapped you're probably on that you do an interview after interview after interview and you never chink no one ever says nothing or you never let out anything and it just made us think do you know what I mean it's not actually this, son. You've got a couple of contracts to sign on that, am I right? <laughs> Whatever that really is, it that that mental strength, and I know that's something you're big on, isn't it? Like mental mental side of things, <laughs> mindfulness and stuff like that. And you mentioned before about like just trying to like be present, like in the moment of you, you know, of the whole thing. And hundred uh, percent, yeah, there's a mad thing that about Canelo, like just you know, and it, puts things it in. Is, I guess. It's um, it's um, little mindfulness and yeah. got the head techniques and stuff. The apps I need to get back on the apps to be honest with you. Like, but I really felt that helped us in in the bubble. Like when I was in my room and stuff and that, and just bring myself back into the present. And I know we touched on it earlier on. Just get back into the moment and enjoying being present. Like your mind will start to wonder, like, what happens if my fight gets cancelled or what happens if my medical doesn't come through or my contract doesn't get received on time or they didn't sign it off and, and obviously your mind starts going in, in other directions and it's just up to you to try to bring it back and control it and, and then obviously just stay in the moment like yeah totally. I get you like it's, it's overthinking isn't it I, I can be big on that sometimes do you know what I mean just like yeah. overthinking things too many times and sometimes you just need to go and like nah just chill man you know you do, yeah Get back to the, get back to the thing, but um, worrying yeah. doesn't prevent anything from happening. It just stops the enjoyment for now. So it's true, very true. Um, how do you like EGB experiences? Do they help? Do you draw? Can you draw on them sometimes? Of like, you know, it's from a fighting point of view as well. Like you've been in with some great people and like great opponents. You've travelled the world and like, I guess. That's all experience in the bank as well, isn't it? Just you know the situations you must have found yourself in with within the GB cell. Oh, definitely. You find yourself in some sticky situations with GB. I have in in loads of different tournaments. Training camps have, can be brutal. WSBs, just loads of different, like very difficult and hard situations and experiences. But the all the all prepared us for 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 now. So I think when I was going into that, uh, in my debut, like I had n- no worry at all because I, I, there was nothing that could have, could happen or could have happened that hasn't happened before. Uh, and that gave us a, a great deal of comfort, you know what I mean? And the, the level of like, the operators and stuff that I had been in with on training camps or in tournaments, competitions, was like... Say like these are the people, and not even just abroad, like even at Burnley, like the level of oppositions that you're training with, that your club mates that you spawn with, and yeah. stuff. Like, you need to check yourself sometimes because you think, like, this is the, the level of op- opposition that I'm used to fighting with, which is you don't realize until like after my debut, didn't realize the the level, like. The, the opponents that I'm that I'm going to be fighting and stuff or have been fighting for JB they're like um, 
Euro European level for for titles as a pro, like high end domestic and European level fighters. So if not world world fighters, so. Do you have a toughest opponent, Cyrus, from your GB days? Someone that you were in with and thought, Christ, he was good. Like, someone that stands out or one or two names, maybe? Uh, there's quite quite a few good for different things. I, I remember Sosoko was a tough opponent. Yeah, um, yeah. He's very elusive. He'd walk you on your shots and he'd walk, pull away and bring you on your shots and stuff. So he was very elusive. More elusive in the second fight, in the first fight, I just cut him off, and I took sent a ring and stuff, and and it got it finished. The early the fight got stopped early, but uh, on the on the second fight for the in the WSB, like it was it was quite hard to pin down for the first yeah. few rounds. I managed to get one, but even like some of the lads from Berkeley, like Pat and Luke McCormack and Frenchy, they they're world class as well. So I can't name anyone else yeah, sure. without mentioning them. But I don't think there's really any better spawn out there. You must be delighted for the two McCormacks, uh, Sakuna Olympics uh, and stuff. Like, how good are they? Like, how special uh, they be? Really, really happy for them. Like, it's been a it's been a long process, and it adds more pressure to it as well. When normally, usually, you have. You get three qualifiers. You get like your European qualifier, your world qualifier. Sometimes you've had the WSB qualifier in the past. Yeah. So you've had you've had three chances at it, but for this time, with the whole situation, there was like it all came down to one fight, and and like if you don't cut the most out with this fight, then it's the four years or five years that you've just put in. Yeah. You know, Nothing. On this So and. Look at a look at a hard fight like with that uh, with a Turkish lad. I spot him in Turkey on a training camp, and we had a, a four on war. So I knew that he was a he was going to be a tough opponent. But Luke dug in in the third round, like and and swayed it his way when I think it was quite neck and neck. So I was really happy for him for two brothers as, as well to go to the Olympics together. Is a massive achievement right. for North East, and I really believe that. Both capable of meddling, so fingers crossed. There, fingers crossed. And um, just about yourself, do you think you'd, you know, was were you at the end of the journey side with, with GB, and, and you took that as far as, as you could, you think? And it was time was right to think, right, like, come on, let's try our luck in the in the pros now. Yeah, I feel like uh, maybe it's around 2018. Uh, I was looking to get certain opportunities, like going to the the Commonwealth Games and stuff, or Maybe he's going to a European Games. Uh, Pat had moved up, so it was me and him. I, I, I was injured, so that took me out of the runs a bit anyway. So by the time he went to the Commonwealth and won gold, he, he's deservedly in that pole position and he got stronger and stronger at 69. So my opportunities were limited. I was doing box eye tournament for the fourth time around. Yeah. yeah. Or down for the second time just competitions that I've already done which are great competitions like they're where I've got my best medals at uh, like Mike Tyson and Oscar De La Hoya and Danny Garcia and stuff are medal medaled or whatnot. Uh, but I wanted the majors I wanted I wanted to go to the European Games I wanted to go to the European Championships mm -hmm. I wanted to do, do a World Championship or an Olympic uh, or a Commonwealth yeah. but obviously they can only send one person at each weight and and so my opportunities were very limited and uh, it looked like better opportunities were opening up elsewhere um, and I felt like it was the best time for me as well I'd stuck it out I took as much in from GB as I could yeah. for experience for development and stuff uh, and I think it was time to fly the nest like and it's it's worked out well so far so and uh, I guess when that call came in from from Matchroom, I, you know, I guess that helped make your mind up as well. Do you know what I mean? There's not really many better promoters and promotional companies to to turn over with. Do you know that like that platform? You know, is huge. yeah. Like you must have been really? excited when that when that came to fruition and, and came off. Definitely, because uh, it was something that I had 
thought and dreamt about for for years, like even since we started my JV days, but we were, were had an offer on the table from uh, MTK, Warren, yeah, Matchroom. Uh, so there was options. Uh, so and that gave us a great deal of comfort as well. That obviously reinforces yeah. any confidence or gets rid of yourself out and stuff. That there's if there's the three leading boxing promoters are after us, then obviously I'm doing something right. So exactly it shows that they take a notice, and then you know what I mean. And you said before that sometimes you feel you can be under the radar when you haven't a fighter, but you know, to get offers from all the big names, show that you know, people know exactly who you are and what you've done. So it speaks for itself, doesn't it? Definitely me and I. Uh, we've got a question here from Rob Tebbett, who's the guy that is the main man at Boxing Social. He says, uh, yeah, yeah. who was your favourite fighter growing up and who is your favourite fighter now? Growing up, it, would, it had to be in Sugar Ray Leonard. Yeah. Uh, I just shared something on my Seen Instagram. It? Class, all right. Oh, well, I got a chance to work with him a few years back and uh, do some parts and stuff for him. And he was, when I read his book and everything, he was the one I looked up for because he didn't really, he didn't even want to turn professional after Olympics. He only turned professional, I think, was to pay for treatment and look after, I don't know, after his family. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so that was that I admired massively. Uh, so, Sugar Ray, back in the day. Yeah, uh, you can't argue with that, can you? That is like... <laughs> genuine, genuine great in it, you know what I mean? Like, genuine... I, I definitely. Uh, and now, there's been, there's been a few fighters over the years. Like, I used to love watching Lenores, watched him from mm. early days when he fought like DeMarco and stuff. Yeah, yeah, sure. But I, I really enjoy watching Canelo. I've I watched Canelo since his fight with Jose Miguel Cotto, which was Cotto's young, I think, younger brother. Right, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I think it got wobbled in one of the rounds. Like it was, it's been sprung up a few times now. Uh, but watching from there, like, and I really enjoy his style and really uh, enjoy watching him. So it's got to be Canelo. Good show, man. He's so good at the minute, isn't he? He's just a fighter on a complete like, part of his game, and it? it's just like you know to do what he did to even like quality fighters like Callum Smith and Billy Joe Saunders is just that level again where he just just I amazing. He's, uh, I was just, uh, and I can't really say anyone that's going to beat him, like, to be honest with you, around. Yeah, I don't know. I think you mentioned going up and wait, I think that, Bertur, Bertur, yeah, Bertur, yeah, maybe that's where yeah. problems could arise when he could go to light, you know, but again, you wouldn't put a past him beating any of those guys at light heavy either, do you know what I mean? Like, he's already been coming up. So it's exciting to see, hopefully, this fight with uh, plan will be made. Yeah. Uh, and then we'll see him move on to maybe a heavier weight. I'll come back down to light, like a light weight. But Absolutely. Man. But just to like, you know, get towards the end, I guess, mate, but just like, you know, going forward, you said you haven't got a day yet for your second pro fight, but hopefully, you know, it won't be too long. Maybe, it's, you know, yeah. later, late summer, maybe. But, uh, and just, you're just going to see how it goes. Keep going and keep getting Definitely. wins and keep progressing and see what you can bring back and bring back the Northeast boxing and, Bring the good nights back, you know? I definitely keep my head down and keep grafting there. Huh? Uh, mate, I, I wish you all the best. It's, you know, we kept in touch over the years with British Boxing Blog and stuff. Uh, it's a pleasure to speak to you, mate. And, you know, you you know, even when you were in the bubble, like you mentioned before, you were messaging us saying, oh, sorry, can we do an interview with another night? And it's like, stop mess, stop thinking about us, do you know what I mean? Like, such a nice guy and it's it's been a pleasure to speak to you again, mate. And thanks for making time for us. We, we really do. No. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's always a pleasure, Stephen. Thank you. Cheers, Cyrus. Thanks, mate. Take care. All the best. Yeah. I'll see you soon, mate. Bye-bye. Bye, mate. Bye.